Right, so it is day 70 of my New Year's tree planting thing. Um, and it's time for the review, so let's get on with it. At long last, we have some growth on our little macadamia, so that's good. We also finally have very close to reaching the threshold of, of our first landmark. This first new leaf since it went in is nearly at the same level as the stick that was there to support it. So that's good on our alloy dendron barberry. Sabbles, looking nice and green and vigorous. I'm not sure there's been any distinct growth here, but it does not look unhealthy by any stretch. The other in a slightly darker spot is a slightly darker shade. I do think the central leaf is coming up, so I'm happy with that. Our little pink mango is looking nice and green. There's some nice texture coming to these leaves, still a little fragile, but they're coming up nicely. And the little Thespesia garciana, a uh, tree hibiscus, looking nice and vigorous, good and happy with that. Despite the dead growth points on our little soursop last week, the one that was doing bulk of the work is still healthy and still growing. And generally speaking, it looks like a pretty perky plant, so I think that's just some of its stems stopping for the season. Uh, not stopping for the season are the growth points on our little bay laurel, which are coming up nicely most part, even a few around the injured crown. The first of our Bauhinia petersiana is hardening up nicely. What had been the tender new growth is significantly less tender now, and there is another growth point coming along here, and another one here. Generally speaking, this is a healthy looking little plant. And I am convinced that this is new opening up on the Washingtonia filifera, so I'm very happy with that. I mentioned yesterday that I sometimes call this time of year the death zone and you can start to see why as we get into these more exposed trees. So this is the rain tree that I didn't plant but decided to mark out. And although the marker aloe is starting to perk up a little, the sudden shift in light intensity has really burnt this little native tree quite badly. It should recover, it's a very tough little tree, but uh, yeah, just a warning of things to come. See, I have gone around and given everything a litre of water today, but this is still very soft, but it's still green, which is the important part, so hopefully we will have some restoration there. This one that had been considering opening up, it's still nice and firm compared to its sister, but it is uh, not nearly as inclined to look open as it was last week. Just a way of conserving water, which is perfectly sensible. It means the plant is alive and reduces the chance that it'll stop being. On the other hand, there is no sign of any restoration from our little Perinari, who is currently off the count. If we see some green shoots here, we'll be adding it on. But for now, I'm assuming this is dead. I'm still watering it, but yeah, I don't. I'm not it, not thrilled about this. And Phoenix, although these are prone to sunburn, and it does look yellower in the video than it actually is, uh, it's still got some nice green in the centre there. The outside leaves have died off. The base of the stem still pretty firm, so I'm happy with that. <laughs> Tender growth on our little Cizigium, uh, waterberry, is coming up nicely. You can see some more leaves forming there, which is really good, especially in weather like this. Um, no sign yet from its companion, nor from this one. Oh, and we've got, we've got some new life right down here, sorry, in the grass on this other companion one, so that is good. Despite being much more exposed than it really should be, this little lychee is looking nice and healthy. A little bit of curl in that leaf still, but not an unhealthy plant, and the growth points still look green, so I'm happy with that. Slightly better sheltered in here, and you can see not only is the main growth point green up here, there's also a tiny little secondary growth point just poking out there, a little reddish one. And in a little bit more shelter here, and I think very necessarily at this time of year, this little jackfruit is looking absolutely fine. A lot of the time this sort of drying out phase can be fine for things in shelter because it just means they're getting a little more light and they're not drying out intensely because they are in shade. Um, and it's really the things that are very exposed that you have to worry about. Rolf, who did get a little bit more than the average litre of water this morning, is looking floppy but not sunburned. And the growth points themselves, that have been growing, are still alive and green in the centre there. 
um, and same here, so I'm happy with that. And cashews seem to have taken being added to the count seriously, so we've got some new growth coming up here. This has come up really nicely so far already, so I'm very pleased with that. Same here, nice little growing point in the centre there. This one which had lagged a bit is starting to play catch up with its siblings. And some more lovely growth there. And even this one which suffered the indignity of caterpillars has got a new growth point coming there with some new leaves on their way. This agris, being a larger plant, has a little bit more water reserves than some of the smaller ones. So although that leaf is now fully brown and this leaf and this leaf are very much on their way out, the central stem is nice and firm and still nice and green. The original two Cyagris Romanzofiana, looking nice and green. These are a little bit more sheltered here. Also got a lot more grass growth up around them, so they are much less affected by this weather. We've got a lovely little leaf hopper here. You can see she's only just shed her skin. The nymphal skin is right behind her there. I'm assuming it's a her. Uh, but this is a Lasmoscellus, so one of the Lephopid leaf hoppers. And this one again, there's not much progress to be seen, but it's healthy, it's nice and firm, and I'm happy with that. This more recent lychee, you can see a little bit of sun damage right there on the growth point there, a little bit of browning. But generally speaking, the leaves are not a bad color. And this has had some water, you can, you can sort of see the soaking in. Um, and I'm not unhappy with that. I would like a little bit more progress, but you can see only the tip of the growth point has died, so actually the part the leaves will come out of uh, should be intact, so I'm happy enough with that. And its sister seems to have had her aloe placed at just a slightly better angle, and so the growth point in the center there is not browned at all, and I am happy with that. And this little bauhinia that went in this on the same day, I'm very glad was sun hardened first, because this is actually looking really healthy. There's a tender little growth point there, which you would expect to suffer. I know this looks a little yellow on camera, but it's very green in life. Um, but with with the sun hardening beforehand, it seems to be coping absolutely fine, so I'm happy with that. The little jackfruit by which I will tumble the empire of the sickle bush, if we can get down to it in there, is looking pretty good, I would say. Yeah, it's nice and healthy. No damage to the growth point, coming up well. So this little banana, you can see the leaves have folded right back. This is, again, water conservation in action because all the water loss happens on the underside, on this pale part here. And so by folding that in, it's really reducing how much water it's losing. It can't do that with this leaf currently, but if I pull it away from the ginger, you can see it folds right in. Now that's just it being water stressed and being a little bit sensible about that, but it's not a bad color. It's nice and firm. So I'm happy with that. On to a little bit of distress. Now, this is as bad as it looks. Uh, so it is worth bearing in mind, this is one of the suckering palms. So even though the growth point here has sunburned quite badly, there is no reason to believe that it can't send up more. You can actually see there is a tiny little sucker on this one, which I hadn't noticed when I put in, but I don't think that's new because there's also some sunburn there. Um, but also the actual part that needs to be damaged to kill the heart is right down in the middle in here and so there's a good chance this is just the tip is sunburned and it'll come back up from the bottom so I'm not too worried yet but I might get soon it is very much the same story with the siblings of that palm so we've got this one in a very similar state everything really exposed to the Sun is bright white um, and just, just straw at this point there is still some green in the folds of the growing point here in the youngest leaf so we'll see if that can restore and hopefully it can so for now I'm not taking it off the count but but it's not looking great a little bit more shelter and slightly better sort of prognosis so you can see at the base of the growing tip here there's some nice green coloring and that does sort of distribute in the folds all the way up to the tip of that leaf but again it is very much suffering from the, the intensification of the sunlight we've had the last few days. Uh, I was not expecting it and clearly it wasn't prepared for it either. Meanwhile, here in the shade, this little jackfruit is looking perfectly happy with life. There's a little bit of crinkle in that newest leaf, but that's probably because one of these Dracaena reflex leaves was on top of that. Uh, as these root in, I'll be taking more and more leaves off so they should interfere less and less with it. 
but currently I think a little bit of extra shelter is a good thing. And the neighboring pandanus is also looking perfectly fine. You can see a lace wing has been along and laid her eggs on this leaf. I don't, you can see the very delicate little white tips just in front of my uh, little finger and index finger, uh, perhaps ring finger. With a very delicate little line of eggs on little lace stands. So that's a lace wing has come along and laying her eggs so that they will hatch where the ants can't get to them. Our little lychee number one from that same day, looking perfectly perky. I'm not seeing any sunburn, any damage. The growth tip is currently inactive because it's only just opened two leaves, uh, but it seems in good health. Another lychee from the same day, you can see a little bit more activity there with a little red pair of leaves just dangling over the top of the, the uh, older growth. So that's really good and a nice healthy little growth point just in front of those. Finally for that day you can just about make out through this tangle here, not the best angle for her. You can make it a nice dark red leaf of new growth from the third of the lychees that went in that day, so I'm happy with that. Another little bauhinia which I'm really glad I sun hardened because this is actually looking absolutely fine. Um, tiny little bit of insect damage but a healthy little growth point there, so that should be coming up in no time. Our little Dracaena studenary here, it's looking lovely and green. This was the one that was pre-rooted um, and you can see the value of that. There's a tiny bit of damage to the older leaves but the younger leaves are coming up nicely, really appreciating the extra light rather than suffering for it. And I would say that is a healthy little tree. Her sister who went in from a truncheon instead, so wasn't pre-rooted. The growth point itself, not burnt, a little bit folded, more folded than it was previously. That's probably just from the sort of water stress. Uh, leaves not a bad texture where they aren't actively burnt to a crisp. Uh, so I'm actually happy with that despite how it might look. And the little Liverstoner does seem to be opening up a little bit more than it was. Not sure, it was a very root bound in its little bag and that can often mean that plants respond pretty quickly to planting out. But I think that's come up quite a bit, so I'm happy with that. Still waiting for any sign of activity from our little kapok here. It might take as long as the macadamia, in which case we've probably got another couple of weeks to wait. I'm, I'm not seeing any movement on any of these stems, but not unhealthy, not sunburned, so I'm not worried yet. Another Dracaena studenary from Truncheon, suffering a little bit of sunburn, but not too badly actually. Generally speaking, good texture, good color, just a certain amount of sunburn on some of the older leaves. It's more sheltered sibling, which is more ragged to begin with. No sign of sunburn, just the sort of water rot from where it had been sat in a little bit of a puddle. Uh, but that is, generally speaking, it's regaining some texture, so I'm not unhappy with that. And this little Terminalia mantle. It's nice and sheltered here. It's actually got some growth points starting to show, I think. No, no, just an insect. <laughs> Uh, but it's not unhealthy. Oh no, here we go. Nice little leaf coming just there. And it's in generally good health. No, not majorly changed since it went in, but not significantly suffered either, so I'm happy with that. The rose apple, uh, predictably, considering how the other one responded. Uh, so this is Cezygium jambos, the other one was Cezygium guniensis. Um, is not looking thrilled right now, but it's not dead by any means. There's still nice color in these leaves. It's sheltered from, from too much direct sun, so it shouldn't be too, too damaged at this point. It'll get some afternoon sun, but that doesn't seem to have burned it anywhere. It's just a little bit water stressed while its roots re-establish themselves. So the macadamia that went in on the same day as that looks like it's gonna be showing growth much sooner than, than the one that I put in as a sapling rather than a seedling. There's a lovely little brown growth point right in the middle there, so I'm happy with that. These yuccas stayed nice and upright. It's a little bit of a tilt in the top there, but it's not too soft, so that should perk up quite well. This one again, slightly tilted, but nothing major, so it doesn't seem too unhappy with life. And just a little bit of sunburn here, although I'm not sure that didn't happen before I planted it out, so I'm not too concerned with that either, it's only really at the tip and the growth point is way down in there, so that shouldn't be too much of a problem. No sign of sunburn on our Euphorbia engines. These can be a little bit prone to sun stress. They aren't usually starting in very open areas, 
but it doesn't seem too upset at the moment. I'll do a bit of distress I can't blame on the weather. We seem to have entirely lost one of our Brachystesia taxifolia. Um, when I came to water them earlier, there was a sign that something had been digging around here. And I doubt it was digging up the Brachystesia, but it seemed to have removed it one way or another. So that is... Oh, no, hello. This was it. So I think we can blame the weather for that. That is, that is sunburn. We'll see if it'll come back from that, but I'm taking it off the list for now. It's sibling, fortunately, is showing no such distress, so I'm much happier with that and quite relieved. And the third of them, as before, looking good and healthy. A little bit more sunburn than before, but the leaves that haven't been burned are a nice colour, so I'm happy with that. This phoenix, being in a slightly more sheltered spot, hasn't suffered nearly so badly as the more exposed ones. There's a little bit of sunburn at the tip there, but nothing major. I would say that's going to perk up eventually. And the Sagris, if anything, seems to become a little bit more firm in the central point. Again, this is a nice sheltered spot, so it's not nearly so likely to suffer from the increased sunlight and reduced water. It's more likely to just be appreciating the extra light at this point. So that's perfectly healthy. As is this one, there's a little bit of softness in this youngest growth, but I'm not surprised by that. And the general base of it is nice and firm, so nothing to worry about there. Sausage tree has been visited a little more by, by whatever insect had decided to eat it down to, down to threads. But some nice healthy leaves in there even so. And yeah, it doesn't seem to be damaged at the growing point itself. So hopefully another one will be popping out soon with some more leaves to replace the ones that have been turned to threads. It's nice texture and I'm not too worried about that. And this little lychee probably a little more exposed at this time of day than it is for most of the day. Uh, some lovely new growth there, just by my index finger you can see it's a very tender little t growing tip. So I'm happy with that. And the other light you from the same day showing some continued growth, that's really nice. Those leaves filling out well, so I'm happy with that. And I'm not sure, but it looks like the very tip of this little emblic, Amla, uh, Indian gooseberry, Philanthus, uh, it looks like this tip is actually going to be doing some growing soon. I might be wrong about that. Here in the deep shade, our little giant Schifflera is showing that there are settings where something from a decaying rainforest can thrive even as we go into our little death zone. So this is looking really good. So I think Wyatt will be pleased with that. Um, and yeah, I'm happy with that too. I'm taking it as a good sign that uh, currently Hamilton doesn't seem... Oh, hello! There's a very good sign. So I was going to say it's a good sign he doesn't seem more burnt, but it's an even better sign that right there, there is a little growing point opening up. So that is fantastic at last. So I'm very pleased with that. And Aitken, the other of these two, uh, Colophosperma mapani, so mapani trees, you can see her original that started growing is opening up beautifully. You can see there's very fragile butterfly leaves, a little bit of insect damage, but nothing to write home about. Um, and there's another little leaf coming along there. And so if that wasn't enough, we've got another tiny little growth point coming here, so I'm really pleased there. That's great. Less great, but still not giving me cause for concern. Uh, is this little rough lemon citrus jambiri, ex jambiri really, it's a hybrid, uh, as are most domestic citrus. There's still plenty of activity, but it's all these little tiny um, citrus swallowtails. They can uh, eventually sort of strip off all these mature leaves. One of the things that's quite good about this weather is it does tend to discourage a lot of the aphid and ant damage. Uh, so even though these citrus will be more active, if it's hot, and not too hot anyway, um, we won't get the more destructive aphid farming behaviours happening, at least while this weather is ongoing. Right, so this is our lovely little uh, Thomatophyllum bipinatophidium, which is just the most absurdly long name. These leaves do look like they're lobing out a little bit more and, and reassuring me that I have got the right arrow height. Um, so I'm happy with that. It's looking a nice 
nice colour. You can see some of the older leaves are sort of slowly flopping down to the ground. I do think the chickens might have been around here a little bit. But it's generally speaking looking pretty good, so I'm happy with that. As for Solanum batasium, our tree tomato, looking really nice and good. You can see the little spiderlings have mostly moved on under there. Um, and we've got some lovely growth coming here. It's a nice colour. The leaf that was so small and tender last week has opened out beautifully, and I'm really happy with that. I'm going to show you a nice little carrion flower as we pass it, and I nearly trod on it. And another tree that seems to be benefiting from a little bit more light intensity, even though something has been doing something around its base here, so I need to top that up with some more soil. Um, there's our little tea tree, um, whose new growth has mostly hardened off, so you can see a lot of the parts that were really pale and sickly looking have matured into a nice darker green, so I'm greatly reassured by that because I was a little bit perturbed by that pale growth. And this Moringa is, uh, spoiler alert, definitely the happier of the two. Um, a little bit of shelter goes a long way, especially at this time of year and for establishing trees. And uh, when you see the other Moringa, you will understand it quite clearly. Right, so I'm going to split this into two because they've been getting way out of control. So that is uh, part one done. I will find a more accurate splitting point because I'm not entirely sure how many trees are in each, but this feels like a natural breakpoint based on just the locations of the trees. So yeah, so the, this one will be going up first and the other one will be going up later, probably the same day, but they'll be edited separately. But please tune in and watch that one if you are interested. Um, otherwise, thank you for watching this one and tune in again earlier today or yesterday when I uploaded the planting for today.